it's Michelle. I am here to do my month end check in and I also wanted to tell you my bookish New Year's resolution. So I'll start with uh, the books that I finished in December. Um, sorry, I keep getting these weird text messages from somebody who's not speaking in English, not typing in English. I don't know what they're saying. Said wrong number and then they sent something else in French and now they're sending me photos. Okay. So yeah, this is my cell phone that you're on right now. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. And sorry about these boxes back here, but as you know, we're moving. So it is what it is. I did not read a lot in December. I had a very slow reading month between trying to find a new home to move to and just dealing with the holidays and all that that entails. I just didn't get a whole lot of reading done. I did finish Silent Night, Deadly Night by Vicki Delaney. This is part of the year-round Christmas series that she has. This book is number four, I think. Let's see. Yeah, this book is number four. There's five books in the series. I have read the fifth book, but... Recently, I realized I hadn't ever got around to reading the fourth one. I skipped to the fifth one. I don't know why. So now I've read all five of them. I really love this series. It is nice to read even when it's not Christmas time. It's just kind of fun. And what, what it means by a year-round Christmas series is the town is called Rudolph, New York. And the town has a Christmas theme year-round. So not every book takes place during Christmas. It's just that it's in a Christmas town. The protagonist is a lady named Mary, and she owns a Christmas gift shop where she sells ornaments and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. And it's just such a fun series. I am thinking about doing a series spotlight on it because I did just recently find out that the fifth book in the series is the last book in the series, which makes me really sad that the publisher decided not to renew it. In this book, Mary's mother, what was her name? I am so sorry. I don't remember mama's name. It doesn't say, but in this book, her mother has a bunch of college friends over to stay with her before Thanksgiving. It's kind of like a college reunion and somebody gets poisoned, I would say. Basically, she's allergic to peanuts and somebody puts peanut in her food. So that's po being poisoned, I would say. And the mystery ensues from there. And because it's her mother's friends and it happened in her mother's house, she's trying to figure out who did it. But she does it in a way where she doesn't think that she's smarter than the cops. She's not She's not even hiding the fact that she's trying to figure it out from the cops. She just happens to be friends with a cop and they just kind of bounce ideas off of each other every once in a while and it's not really a big deal. I definitely do recommend this book though and I give it five stars. Now, one thing I noticed recently is I do a lot of five star ratings and I was trying to figure out why, but then I realized so what I do, because a lot of people will never give A Cozy Mystery a five star because they say, well, this doesn't compare to, um, I don't know, Little Women or something. But to me, it has to do with the category. So for me, for A Cozy Mystery, this is a five star. So that's what I mean by that when I say five star. It doesn't get any better than this in the Cozy Mystery world. And then the last book that I read, I just read two books after my mid-month check-in. <laughs> the last one that I read was Fanny Flagg, A Red Bird Christmas. This book was very easy to get into. It's about an elderly man named Oswald who finds out he doesn't have very long to live. And his doctor suggests that he moves from Chicago, where he is now, down to Alabama. He said that the climate there would really help. I think he had emphysema, so it would really help him be able to breathe better and maybe live a little bit longer. So he goes to look up this hotel that the doctor told him about. The hotel doesn't exist. Now this book took place, it didn't really say the year, I don't think, 
but it took place before cell phones. I would say well before cell phones, just based on some of the things that were happening in the book, probably about the 1940s or so. So he calls whatever number he can find down there through the operator when he calls for assistance to get a phone number for that town just to see if the hotel is still in business or not. And he finds out from the person that answers that it's not in business anymore. But if he wants to come to the town, um, her friend is actually renting a room out. And he ends up deciding to rent the room and go to this town anyway because of the climate. When he gets down there, he ends up meeting a bunch of new people, and I don't really want to tell much more than that. I think I'd like you to be able to experience the book if you want to read it for yourself. I will say, though, I don't really think of this as a Christmas book in the sense that Christmas occurs in the book, uh, but it's not the whole theme of the book. It just happens, certain things happen on Christmas that are mentioned. But if you're not looking for a Christmas book, you might still want to pick this up anyway. This book was written by the same woman that wrote Fried Green Tomatoes, A Whistle Stop Cafe, I think it was the end of it. I read that book a long time ago. That's what the movie Fried Green Tomatoes is based off of. So if you liked that movie, you like the style of that movie, you might like this book. Miss Flag has a lackadaisical way of writing with her characters and her setting that to me kind of feel like gliding back and forth in a hammock in the spring with a sweet tea in my hand <laughs> and a good book. Just a comforting, just a, a nice kind of rhythm to the books that she writes. I was thinking about this book when I wasn't reading it and I kept a couple different nights it gave me insomnia where I wanted to keep reading instead of going to sleep. That's definitely a sign of a good book. The characters were unique and flawed and human and I love that. I don't like perfect characters. I don't think many of us do. There was also a bunch of Southern recipes in the back of the book which I'm not going to complain about. I give it five stars. I know, I know, another five star book, but, <laughs> but it was so good. I really recommend it. I did want to mention I did the Merry and Bright Readathon and I did a vlog and I said part one. I ended up not doing part two. Well, I did, but I hated it, so I deleted it. So there is no part two. But that's all you would have seen in part two is those two books. Um, I was just in a really grouchy mood. I was having a lot of migraines and I just didn't want to film. So when I did, it was like <laughs> not very fun to watch. My New Year's reading resolution is that I want to read more classics, and the goal is to read 12 classics in the year 2022. I want to read one each month. Last year, I had said that in my mind, but I never really read 12 classics. I don't know if I read many at all, if maybe one or two. So I want to really make a concerted effort to read 12 classics. I wanted to tell you what they are. In January, I plan on reading Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This was originally a two-volume book that was published in 1868 and 1869, and then it was later made into a novel, a full-size novel, as you can see. It's 759 pages long, and this is a coming-of-age story about four sisters during the Civil War, and it's actually, I found out, loosely based on the author and her three sisters. For February, I want to read Silas Marner by George Eliot. This book was actually written by Marianne Evans in 1861, but she published it under the pen name George Eliot so people would read it. <laughs> it's 262 pages long, Wrongly accused of theft and exiled from a religious community many years before, the embittered weaver, Silas Marner, lives alone in Ravelo. Existing only for work and his precious hoard of money, but when the money is stolen and an orphaned child finds her way into his house, Silas is given the chance to transform his life. 
His fate and that of the little girl he adopts is entwined with Godfrey Cass, son of the village squire who, like Silas, is trapped by his past. So definitely let me know if you've read any of these books. Obviously, they're supposed to be good, right? If they're classics, but that doesn't mean that everybody likes them. So I definitely want to hear your input on the books. The next one is Of Human Bondage, and this one is for March by William Somerset Maham. It's 615 pages long, and it was published in 1915. This is another coming-of-age book. I think I'm really going for the coming-of-age age books this year. I do happen to really love them. It's about a boy who is born with a club foot, who is orphaned and raised by religious a religious aunt and uncle. And it's about, it says it's about human liberty and sexuality. Zelda has entered the video here. <laughs> so it sounds like if he's raised, I'm assuming, if he's raised by a religious aunt and uncle, maybe he's trying to adhere to their morality and struggling with having wants and needs and lusts. For April, we have Anna Karenina, which was written by Leo Tolstoy in 1878. It's 864 pages long. I picked a lot of long books. And it's about a doomed love affair. That's all I know. And I guess I'll find out later. <laughs> It's a beautiful copy though, isn't it? Any of the books that I'm talking about that I don't physically have, I have ordered. I'm just waiting for them to arrive. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This one was published in 1861 and it's 544 pages long. This is another coming of age story um, about an orphan named Pip. The only other things I know about it are from the movie, which I'm sure is quite different than the book. The Color Purple. This book was written by Alice Walker in 1982, and it's 283 pages long. It's, you guessed it, a coming-of-age story about a 14-year-old girl named Celie who is being abused and raped by her dad and trying to protect her sister from the same fate. I have seen the movie multiple times and I absolutely, absolutely love the movie. Um, it was actually something that my mom took me to see in the theater. And I've had a few people ask, wow, your mom let you watch that at that age or your mom let you read that at that age. And the truth is I have a mom that never wanted to shield me from reality. <laughs> she wanted me to know about the world as I went into it. She didn't want me to be naive because she felt like she was very shielded from things and she didn't want me to be. And I'm very grateful to her for exposing me to all the real brutal truths of the world. So I'm glad she took me to see it. I was pretty young, but... <laughs> Um, once again, these are about the ways of the world and this is a realistic story. I'm sure somebody has gone through this. So thanks mom. I know you're probably going to watch this video. I like how you raised me. I think it's awesome that you didn't shield me from the world. <laughs> For July, I want to read East of Eden, which was written by John Steinbeck. Now he actually also wrote, uh, Grapes of Wrath, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I'm hoping that I will enjoy this one as much. Uh, he wrote it and it was published in 1952. It's 612 pages long. It's a story about good versus evil and two families. And the book spans for three generations. Um, it's a retelling of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. So I, I'm thinking it's kind of a soap opera, dramatic kind of book. Um, I'm kind of wondering if it might not be like Romeo and Juliet, too, and that mentions two families. August, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. It was published in 1859, and it's 672 pages long. 
a mystery about an, a young art teacher who gives directions to a woman dressed entirely in white and then later finds out from a police officer that she escaped the insane asylum. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and it goes from there. September, Death at La Fenice by Donna Leon. It is 212 pages long and it was published in 1992. It's a mystery that has a high society murder of a conductor, which kind of excites me because the very first mystery I ever read, that the one that got me to fall in love with mysteries, it's my favorite genre by far, was a book where a conductor of a ballet got killed. You know, like the con conductor of the symphony that plays in front of the ballet. Yeah, he got murdered. And then members of the ballet started getting murdered as well. And I just thought, wow. <laughs> this feels kind of like that book. So I really want to read it. Um, it. And then I also read that it questions what the law can do versus what needs to be done. So it kind of sounds like that makes me think of Dexter or something where, you know, he kind of does what needs to be done in a lot of situations, but it's not legal what he's doing. So <laughs> October Moby Dick by Herman Melville. It's 427 pages long. It was published in 1851. It's about a sailor intent on finding the sperm whale to kill him. I honestly don't really have a lot of interest in reading this book, but my husband said that he really thinks I would like it. So I decided to go ahead and read it. The last time he told me that he thought I should read a book was when he wanted me to read The Count of Monte Cristo, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to give this one a chance too. November, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This book was published in 1818. And it's 280 pages long. It's a gothic horror and sci-fi novel about a young scientist who creates a creature uh, in an unorthodox science experiment. I haven't read it. I haven't really watched a Frankenstein movie. I know. I know what Frankenstein is, but I haven't actually watched any of the official Frankenstein movies. I'm assuming this one questions uh, the morality of what this scientist is doing. Um, and it probably questions what makes us human. I'm, I'm guessing here. December, I want to read Around the World in 80 Days. This book was published in 1872 by Jules Verne. It's 237 pages long. It's an adventure about a man who makes a bet that he can travel around the world in 80 days. Will he make it? I'm going to find out when I read it, but it's supposed to be a really fun action packed adventure. I have had this book in my TBR stack for over a year. And then another one that I bought after I put this list together was the little mermaid. And it says, and other fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen. Um, I did do a in the car book haul where I showed this. It's a beautiful book and I'm hoping that I will get a chance to read this this year since it's not officially on my list. I just saw it and had to have it. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. Who wouldn't want this book in their collection, right? It'll look so pretty. So that's it. That is my classic book, um, new year's resolution list. Hopefully I stick to it. Maybe you guys can help hold me to it. <laughs> but let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought or if you read the other two books that I mentioned um, in my wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Happy reading. Bye.